Today I'm making our family's favorite rabbit recipe of all time, rabbit jambalaya. Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah and today I'm gonna to share with you one of our family's special recipes. Uh, we raise a lot of rabbit on our homestead for our family to eat and we raise a little bit to sell too. Um, and one thing that I struggled with early on when we uh, were raising rabbits is how on earth am I going to make this rabbit meat? We can't have fried rabbit like every time we make rabbit for dinner. Uh, so over the course of several years I have developed lots of ways to make rabbit meat um, and I've actually put together our top 25 family favorite rabbit recipes into a little recipe book um, and uh, I have been sharing how to uh, cook these rabbit recipes with you guys uh, through our YouTube channel and today is very special like I said our all-time favorite rabbit recipe is rabbit jambalaya and I actually take this to potlucks and people love it all over the place if you are interested in knowing more about our rabbit recipes and for all of the measurements and everything for these uh, rabbit recipe videos, uh, you can purchase our cookbook for $5, uh, either a hard copy just like this through our Etsy store or uh, through our Amazon shop, you can get um, a digital version for also $5. So enough talking, let's start getting cooking and uh, first we need to gather all of our ingredients. Now the ingredients that we're going to be working with today are diced tomatoes, chicken broth, uh, tomato paste, uh, we're going to be using green peppers, onions, celery, and um, of course a rabbit, we'll be using rabbit meat, uh, some smoked sausage, and then some herbs. We're going to be using um, oregano, basil, parsley, we're going to throw in some cayenne pepper, garlic, and salt. Um, in uh, my recipe I also include shrimp. Uh, I'm actually not a huge shrimp fan so when I make uh, rabbit jambalaya I don't put that in there. Uh, but it is uh, common to have shrimp in jambalaya. Um, so when we get to that part I'll tell you when to put it in. Uh, but an optional uh, ingredient is shrimp. This is a crock pot meal, uh, so this will be fabulous for me to get this going this morning and then be able to finish it uh, this evening for dinner uh, and not have to worry about too much messing around uh, during the busy part of the day. Another reason why I really love this recipe is that so many of the ingredients we can either grow ourselves or raise ourselves. Uh, today the diced tomatoes uh, that we're going to be using are canned and they were from our garden. Um, I've got homemade uh, poultry broth, um, the herbs and the spices minus the salt and minus the garlic honestly. Um, all the herbs and stuff are from our garden dried. Uh, fresh would be awesome but it's not that time of year here yet. And um, of course the rabbit meat is uh, from our uh, homestead as well. Um, in the summer when you have peppers, when you have fresh tomatoes, fresh herbs, all of those things, it even makes this recipe even better. So I, uh, I suggest that you give that a try also. So let's get started on making rabbit jambalaya. Well, I went ahead and I put in the uh, tomato paste. It's not easy to do that one-handed. Um, and now next I'm gonna add the uh, tomato, the diced tomatoes. So it's a really nice uh, kind of chop and dump meal basically and here's the poultry broth. Uh, while we're at it let's get the other easy things out of the way. Let's do all these spices. Uh, there's uh, cayenne pepper, basil, oregano, and parsley all in there dried. Minced garlic. Dump that in there. And the salt. Okay. So we got those things out of the way. Let's just stir up that goodness. Now I may end up adding more diced tomatoes because you just can't have enough of that. And my youngest daughter, Samantha, absolutely loves diced tomatoes and she's always asking me to double it in every recipe that I make. Okay, now on to chopping. Now 
with these uh, smoked sausages, I'm gonna cut them in half and then in quarters again, just to make the meat uh, go a little bit uh, farther in the jambalaya. And so there's more opportunity for, you know, every bite or every other bite that you have a little piece of sausage. Now this is not from our farm. Um, I wish that it was, uh, but it is a brand that does not have any um, unnatural preservatives, nitrates or nitrites. And uh, that is very important for our family uh, in the situations, the very few situations that we buy meat from the store, uh, we absolutely make sure that it does not have uh, those nitrates and nitrites. Okay, let's see how this is gonna look when it's all stirred up. Everything in the pot, minus the rabbit. I am choosing to break the rabbit down and only put in the meat, the meaty pieces in there to cook because I wanna minimize the opportunity for small bones to end up in my jambalaya. Uh, rabbits have very, very small backbones, vertebrae, and very tiny, almost, um, almost flexible rib bones and those can easily be missed when you're taking the meat off the bone and then it ends up in your jambalaya and you don't want somebody to like break a tooth or choke on it. Um, so my recommendation is to do it this way. Now uh, you can see this beautiful rabbit we have in here. Uh, we have a video that shows about these uh, shrink wrap bags. Uh, they're actually uh, chicken shrink wrap bags, uh, but we use them for rabbits also, and it works really well. Um, I, if you're interested in knowing more about that, um, I will go ahead and put a link to that video uh, up here. We're just gonna take this out of here, and I'm just going to, um, I'm just gonna break this rabbit down real fast. Um, I'm not going to explain much of what I'm doing uh, because I, we also have, um, we also have a very detailed video where I actually break down a rabbit uh, into the meat pieces on camera close up for you to watch. Um, and I will uh, go ahead and link to that video for you um, up in the corner there as well. Now, if you are considering raising rabbits for your family, uh, we have been raising rabbits on our uh, homestead here and on our, in our urban homestead in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I have actually done a really extensive uh, video series on how to raise rabbits for meat. And uh, I will go ahead and link to that uh, rabbit series right up there. So this is what we have. We have a saddle here, which is the midsection, uh, two front legs and two back legs here. And so we're just going to, uh, we're just gonna set these in here uh, just lightly on top. We're not gonna mix them in because after they're cooked, we're going to pull them out. We're gonna pull them out and then pull all of the uh, meat off the bones and mix it back in. Just gonna put them in there like that. And what I'm going to do is now, like I said, I'm not gonna just totally submerge them, but I am just going to dip some of this um, liquid off there. Put that on top of the meat, just so it's not there all by itself, getting all dry and lonely. Okay, so. We're ready to put the um, top on and put it into the slow cooker. Okay, it's all ready for the slow cooker. I'm going to set it on low and we're gonna let it cook for six to eight hours until the rabbit meat is done. Now, rabbit meat is done at uh, between 160 and 165 degrees. Um, and uh, so we'll be back then. Well, the meat is done. So let's open it up and take a look. Ooh, it's looking good. We're gonna take these out and put them on a plate so they can cool. And then we will um, take the meat off and put the meat back in to the jambalaya mixture. Okay, this is cool enough. So I'm just gonna start picking uh, this meat right off the bone and I'm gonna put it 
in the crock pot right away in small bite-sized pieces. Uh, you could do this with a fork, but um, I really find that it's just fine for me picking it off with my fingers. Okay, let's stir this up and see what it looks like. Looks good. The next step is to return this over to the crock pot and uh, just keep it warming, keep it on low until it's time to serve your dinner. In the meantime, I'm gonna start my rice um, in the rice cooker. Now, um, a lot of people when they eat jambalaya, they actually mix the rice in with the jambalaya and serve it that way. Our family likes to just spoon the rice on the bottom and then put the jambalaya on top and then eat it however they want to. We're gonna put some cheese on it today because from we're, we're from Wisconsin and everybody puts cheese on everything when you're from Wisconsin. So the crock pot is going back in the base um, while we get the rest of dinner ready. Oh, I forgot to tell you, if you're going to put shrimp in your jambalaya, now is the time to do it. Put your shrimp in there, cover it, put it on low, and let it cook for at least another 30 minutes. Well, everything is all set. Let's serve up a bowl. Okay, we've got our jambalaya here, some white rice, and some cheese to go on top. Uh, I like to serve Kevin's bowl first, so that's what, that's what we're gonna do today. Again, nice helping of rice. Steamy. And then this gorgeous jambalaya. Look at this. That the taste of that sausage has really come through. All of those herbs and spices that we've put in are just amazing. It really thickened up nice too. And uh, the amount of rabbit that went in there is just perfect. Look at how beautiful that looks. Let's put some of that in the bowl. See if we can do it without spilling it all over the place. A little more. Yes. Okay, over here. Let's get some cheese on there. We're using Colby Jack today. Looks delicious. So it looks like it's dinner time. I am super excited. Thanks so much for coming by as I make our family's favorite rabbit jambalaya. If you are not a subscriber yet, right now is a perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Uh, we also love comments and questions. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and share it with family and friends. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.